All right, it looks like we've got our first battle cast of Total War Warhammer 2. Um, in this, we'll be actually doing a dual cast here. We're going to start off with the High Elves against their dreaded nemesis, the Dark Elves. Let's kind of go over our build here today. So, popping that up, uh, we've got a Dragon Prince on, well, I'm sorry, a Prince on a Dragon. We've got a Flame Spire Phoenix, got a backline of two archers with supported by Spearmen. Oh, already getting uh, some raining, rain, rain down upon us. Um, but we also have alternating White Lions, Hoeth, Swordmasters of Hoeth, White Lions, Swordmasters of Hoeth, and then one more unit of White Lions. We uh, also went with the, uh, oh, look at that, already kind of kicking in here. They've got uh, some Dark Reaper uh, bolt throwers kicking, uh, shooting at us from across the land. We also have a Lore Master of Hoeth as well. So let's uh, let's see what gets going here. So for an early engagement, actually, uh, they didn't take any Dark Shards. The only thing they've got here are, are uh, three Reaper Bolt Throwers. So I'm not too worried about uh, contesting the air. And Marathi is upon her Dark Pegasus Pony thing. So what we're going to be doing here is I'm sending the Flamespire Phoenix just already right at Marathi, just trying to get the, trying to get it in a little bit earlier in the game. Um, this is a little bit quicker of a fight, so I'm going to be able to uh, talk through things a little bit faster or a little bit better here for you. And the, uh, the objective here is to move the Prince on the flank. We want to be able to use the Flame Breath so that it actually uses all the benefits of the Flame Breath. I was using Flame Breath a lot against a lot of uh, characters, and that's not the best target for them, actually. We're actually going to get right here. Coming up here real soon. Get the units marching slowly here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Just right into these Black Guard of Nagarond. We're going to watch that health at the top there eats through it look at that oh man sorry for the for the frame rate drop oh i mean all said and done though that took about at least 40 percent of its health so pretty huge look at that scouring pit of death right there black art of nagaron all over the place charred to bits so that is the effective way to use your Dragon Breath. You do want to be able to get on the side, on the flank of a unit, and shoot it across. I mean, we did get some shots into this Black Art of Nagarond with the with the with the breath, but I targeted this one. Moving the lineup, trying to do a straight across uh, engagement here. Now he did uh, kind of cross charge me here with these black art of nagaron and i kind of did almost the same but my units are a little more spread out so we can get a bit more of a wrap around going here let's get that glorious charge look in there oh, i love that like kind of like light versus dark right there just kind of the lord of rings-esque like oh twist your axe chop him and completely path through him <laughs> We also have our sword masters there with the ability to kind of wrap around in this unit, which is huge. But I made a mistake in actually having these guys, or these sword masters, charge in as well. And I, there's some, I rectify that pretty quickly. But I do want to focus on this flank here. We have uh, some spearmen moving in to hit these cold one knights. Uh, they're going for our back line. And we're moving our, our westernmost spearmen in to uh, help out to reinforce that eastern portion. We've got our sword, our lore master uh, engaged as well. Our white lion's going for this black guard of Nagaron. And uh, we also have this white lion um, engaging these two units of witch elves, which is not too great, but things are happening. Also got this flamesfire phoenix jumping on Marathi still. One unit of witch we targeted the witch elves with our archers because they do not stand much of a chance against uh, ranged, and uh, we we brought our archers back so that the uh, Kolbanites have to push into that back line further, getting sandwiched by two units of spearmen here, which is pretty large, pretty large and in charge. And pulled the flamesfire phoenix off of Marathi to get into those Kolbanites as well. We want to get that back line secured again, and keeping those that prince on Marathi to kind of keep that pressure on the lord there. Um, but we have popped, I believe, at this point. Yeah, Earthblood has been popped right now. Um, we did pop Soul Leech then on Marathi as well. Um, if you've noticed, so the Prince is getting just triple teamed by these Reaper Bolt Throwers. So he's taking quite a bit of damage, but he's still doing quite a bit in turn. I mean, Marathi's in, in poor health. The front line of their, I mean, their three Black Art of Nagaron are, are failing pretty, uh, pretty soundly here. I'm pretty okay with this. Uh, but we did, oh, I'm sorry, I missed it here, but we got a... 
Marathi dropped the, uh, whatever it is, the, uh, stinking, stinking vagina <laughs> from shadows onto, uh, this unit of archers. I never got those rampaging in the background, don't need to worry about them. Popping, uh, Del he's got the Bane Shield activated on him to give him some missile parry, um, and we're gonna get some Weissens form on him as well. These things are just going hog while his Murder's Pro West kicks on him. The final duel in the skies. We've uh, brought our spearmen in to kind of reinforce the archer's position. Got the phoenix still focusing over there. Archers are now just starting to shoot into these witch elves. Um, the black heart of Nagron has to have crumpled here. Really, things are looking up pretty heavily for me. Um, I'm pretty okay with that. The enemy lord is dead. Marathi falls to the might of the prince. So, what I did here was... And if, if we can take a look, we hold down the spacebar, we can see the, the arc of these Reaper Bolt Throwers. Rather than sending the Prince directly at them, we sent him completely north. By sending him completely north, he is able to move out of the arc of a lot of these Reaper Bolt Throwers and actually allow him to, those Bolt Throwers so they don't have the chance to maneuver as quickly and get a bearing on him. Focusing back over here. I am no fool though, I know what happens to a, a Lord this low getting targeted by, by artillery. Proof tis in the pudding. No, my prince! Whap, whap. Oh. Oh, oh. That's the one. Oh. They can, they can really take a lot of shots at the end there. It's always what I've hated about Total Warhammer 2 is like, someone who's dying, like, still has got. There it is. So falls off our prince. But we are in quite obviously a very good, strong position here. Um, a little too late for the Reaper Bolt Throwers to do much of anything. Archer still shooting into the back line. And uh, since we have scant minutes left here, or seconds left here, I'm actually going to... Uh, I should be fine on, on slow-mo. But what I've actually done is you move the archers up as your unit kind of pushes through the front line. You want them to be able to constantly pressure this back line. So in case it does rally, you've got the ability to use those archers to knock them out of play. So what we're going to do here is uh, take a look at the end screen. And then after that, we'll we'll start on the second episode. But you can really see here that the Swordmasters of Hoeth got great usage, 110 and 62 kills. I'm a huge fan of the Swordmasters against Dark Elves. They trade better with Executioners. They're an overall better unit than Executioners. And they're just overall a very impressive unit. I love the way they transitioned into this game from Tabletop. I mean, Tabletop, they were, they were beasts as well. They had their heavy armor. They had their ability to deflect shots. But they also had their uh, two... Uh, attacks, their high weapon skill, they, they were buzz saws. And if you use the Razor Banner on them and, and uh, Melkos Smith on Miasma, you had a chance to really kind of um, turn them into a, just a destructive powerhouse. I think it's Melkos. I can't remember the one that uh, increases the weapon skill. Um, it's in Shadows. Someone, someone will correct me. But we can see here that th this, that, that uh, Fuel Hunter here had a, had a pretty solid army. I mean, like, Witch Elves is a pretty interesting choice to take in this this multitude, but I think it really kind of worked for him. Um, I was just able to match up a little bit better with uh, his his army across the board, which allowed me to get get a little bit better of a trade-in, I'd say. Um, the Spearmen didn't do well, but they did their job, and that's all that really matters. They were able to tie down the Cold One Knight so that we could put more archers onto them, we could get the Flamespire Phoenix onto them. So really, really happy with how this, this build worked out. I'm a huge fan of this one against Dark Elves. You've got a, a really good strong line and three white lions. You've got a lot of great usage of these two sword masses of Hoeth because they're going to trade really well with anything in the Dark Elf front line. But you also have a really strong presence with that Flamespire Phoenix and that dragon. He's going to be able to goon squad down. Um, well, the combo is going to be able to do goon squad down uh, Malekith or any of the early flying lords. Um, another alternative you could do here is dropping all the chevrons and using a frost heart phoenix. That's a really good option as well. But um, that, that kind of sums up this one here. Um, give me a second here and we'll, we'll get going right into the next one. Getting started here with the episode, or not episode two, but battle number two. Um, we'll go over how this build works out and what we're doing. Um, I'm actually going to pause it because we have a lot of early game micro I want to go over here. So um, what we have is two units of Saurus Warriors with shields. We have a Temple Guard unit. So great, so good. But honestly, I don't use them in a lot of my Lizardman builds. The Temple Guard have... 
think we can take a look at that. Well, the Temple Guard have like 28 or 29 our AP, whereas the Saras Warriors still have 18 or 19 AP. One of them has an 8, one of them has a 9. I can't remember which one. So they still do a considerable amount of AP damage without that 1,200 uh, price point. So when you're fighting up against, uh, say, Skaven, the Temple Guard are really just not worth it pick-wise. There's not a lot of high-value targets, but so I'm, I digress. So... We have our Saurus units. We've got three Skink Cohorts. We have a Skink Priest on Heavens. We have the Mighty Croc Gar, a Revivification Crystal, a, so a Solar Engine uh, Bastilodon, and then lastly, a Skink Chief and Cold One Spear Riders. Oh, and two units of Chameleon Skinks. And our opponent has got a nice line of Dark Shards this time. Uh, the Mighty uh, Dread Lord, a Sword and Crossbow, so the uh, range variant. And then we also have a Sorceress, a Dark One and four units of black arc corsairs one unit of nagaron and then two units of cold one chariots so a very diverse um, and interesting build this time around but what i want to talk about here is i'll put this back in slow motion um i've got the chameleon skinks already trying to target onto these cold one chariots i've brought up the cold one spear riders and the skink chief to support them in case they push them really hard and really we're we're, we're sh using the Bastilodon uh, Solar Engine to shoot into the uh, Dark Spears. Ooh, already a good shot right off the start. Wanna get another good shot into it. I wanna just watch it come right through the screen and blast through crap. <laughs> Uh-oh, I can feel it. Oh! <laughs> oh, that was cool. Um, so we have, uh, these guys have retreated back, skirmished back a little bit here. Um, they're really not going to take much range damage, so I'm not worried about that at all. Oh, sorry, I missed that one. Oh, that was a good one, too. Already starting to suffer pretty hard and heavy from that. Um, you can not, you can tell the Black Orc Corsairs have a, a speed of 40, so they're pretty quick on the move, so it's pretty great. We're bringing that Skiing Chief in here. Looking to uh, threaten, threaten, some, uh, threaten the skies a little bit. We're bringing these uh, chameleon skinks away from the cold one chariots. We're, we're going to keep the cold spear riders doing their thing. Blade wind's kicking into my guys, doing some damage initially on these uh, temple guard. But wait, there's more. Oh, we missed it. I'm sorry. Well, um, with the uh, skink priest, we used. Uh, Breath of the Midnight Wind right here, and it actually routed off one unit of Dark Shards, knocked this one apart pretty heavily. You can see there's uh, some death there as a result. Um, and do keep in mind, the Solar Origin does give a debuff to all these units. It is making it so that... Uh, oh, the Noxious Breath Attack from the uh, Black Dragon here. Um, even we were talking about how we want to use it in the flank. He didn't use it in the flank, but it still got pretty a pretty good amount of damage on the Temple Guard here. But the uh, Bastilodon Solar Engine shooting into the Dark Shards is going to confer a negative buff to them on their ranged ability, so it's pretty important there. All right, bring those Chameleon Skinks over here trying to uh, threaten these Dark Shards. Putting the Solar Engine onto Malekith, uh version 0.5, or should I just hit the Dreadlord? Bring her skink cohort, cohorts around to put pressure on those Dark Shards. We don't want to deal with them anymore. And the Lord himself, Crocard, just eating through some Black Art Corsairs. Revivification Crystal coming up and uh, getting into some melee range as well on these Black Art Corsairs. Bringing uh, this uh, skink priest in as well. Power of Darkness being popped on that uh, Dark Sorceress. Uh-oh. Oh, this is going to be so good. Get real cinematic here. One of my favorite things about the Comet of Cassandra is this part. Uh-oh, look at that. Just opening up the eye itself. Bringing its fury down to the land. Um, it's really hard to use a lot of these spells, too, because they have such a wind-up. Um, we targeted this unit because, as you can see, it is quite clearly very blobbed up, and it's a perfect target here. Uh oh, any minute, any second now, that's going to come down. Sorry for the unnecessary crank up, but I'm excited and don't want to miss another really cool magic death. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. The slowest moving comet of all time. Boom. Oh, yeah. 
dropped frames all over the place. And we can see it did a quite a bit of damage here on these Black Art Corsairs, knocked apart their their morale a little bit. But we didn't put, so what we are, we're doing over here is, Krokgar is eating up the mighty Dreadlord. Um, the uh, Chameleon's Kings are kind of caught up on that, unfortunately, but they're eating up this uh, unit of Dark Shards as well. We got our Skink Chief kind of in the background there. This engagement, not worried too much about. It's mainly just to keep those chariots from buzzing through my line. Use the, uh, the the shooter hand of God, whatever it is, on uh, the Dreadlord. I was able to bring him down and kind of make him flee a little bit here. Popped uh, our revivification crystal on the Temple Guard, gonna resurrect some of them, bring them back in the fight, and we're putting our uh, Skink Priest onto that uh, that Priestess. Ooh, getting a little uh, Doom Bolt action there. Not too worried about these uh, chariots coming back online. Moving everything up, we, we've kept Krokgar in engagement with um, the Black Art of Nagarond intentionally. Um, we I know that they are anti-large and he is large and they're AP as well, but Krokgar can really still slap someone around in that situation. And by keeping him locked down there, we were able to get the Bastilodon and the Temple Guard onto them. So it's pretty huge and, and, and very intentional. Uh, but we're now going to divert the Skink Chief on over to both the Dreadlord and uh, the Sorceress. Mainly the Dreadlord, though. Our uh, backline, you can see our skin cohorts are still chasing down these Dark Shards. By doing that, they don't have a chance to really bring to bear much of their firepower onto us. Taking pot shots at the Dreadlord here. Getting a uh, Krokgar out of that melee. We're gonna he's popped Sacred Spawning, so he's got his nice physical defense buff. I think in that case, I meant to actually pop the Swiftness, but we did give him Cold Blooded so he can start coming back online a little bit quicker. Uh, Dreadlord's in some serious trouble here. Um, this engagement's not going too well with these uh, Saurus with shields, but there's, they are holding that line, which is good. That's the intention right there. Once he gets a little bit higher, we can do some more with uh, Krokgar. The back line of uh, Skinks pushing on the uh, Chameleon Skinks. Should have been pressing on those Dark Shards a little bit better. We're bringing, those, uh, bringing the mighty Krokgar over here. Raffle Stomp. A little bit more of these... Uh, Black Ark Corsairs, also one of my favorite units. You just look at it, just whipping its tail back and forth. I whip my tail back and forth. But um, I didn't focus on anything else there because I knew it was coming to an end. But uh, another close victory. Um, really great. Uh, I, I actually got a chance to play Fuel Hunter twice back to back. Um, so Fuel Hunter, thank you very much for uh, playing with me. Um, you had two really great builds. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this this is another video that we're using Lizardmen in for maybe the second time now. Um, and I'm really enjoying the application of Lizardmen. Like, it, I was really struggling, but after really kind of wrapping my brain around their builds, I think that they're really, really, really competitive. If I'd, if I'd say anything, Dark Elves are kind of the most competitive of all builds um, with, of the four we have to choose from <laughs> until Mortal Empires comes out. But I really enjoy playing as a Lizardman. I didn't think I would as much, but just their ability to really hold the line. I mean, Saurus Warriors are such monsters. When you can really get them to, to, to bear, they can do quite a bit of damage. And even though they don't have that AP character, so they kind of have that hidden AP, so it makes them pretty strong and stalwart as well. Um, I'm, I'm really enjoying playing them. But we can see here, nothing did like a whole gross amount of damage. I mean, 73 from these skin cohorts as it was eating up Dark Shards is pretty cool. Um, but I mean, everything just kind of performed very well instead. 39, 32, 47, 42, 37. Um, 32, 56, well, man, that uh, Solar Engine really, really did a number. But I'm really happy with the way this, this build performs. Um, another option here is to drop a Temple Guard, go a little bit wider in the front line, and maybe even um, pick up another Solar Engine or swap out Croc Guard for the generic Lord on a uh, um, a Carnosaur. So you do have some options with a build like this. Um, I went with Heavens. You could go with Beasts and use a lot of... Uh, not stinging swarm. What the hell? Um, use a lot of uh, uh, the flock of rave, flock of doom. There we go. Um, but I went with heavens here because I don't really use heavens, and I wanted to use some breath action. So um, it worked out pretty well for me. But that that concludes our videos here today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the Tomb King video that's coming up here. Um, it's a little bit of uh, lore into the Tomb King's legendary lords, and uh, we'll have plenty more coming your way in the in the coming weeks. A head to head campaign with Turner and I is going to be continuing this week. We will probably be live streaming it on Sunday as well. So if you do want to watch us live stream it, we'll be doing that on Sunday. But uh, thanks for watching here today, guys. Have a good one and take care.